Dixon. I happen to be the pastor, interim pastor here 
uh, at the Colfax United Methodist Church in downtown Colfax, Iowa. Thank you for being here as part of our worship experience. We are not here by accident today. Huh? We're here for a reason and we're here for a purpose. I want you to understand that. You all know that. You've been around me for a while. You understand and know that what we're looking for is a fresh infilling of God's spirit. The opportunity for our church to come alive even more so, not by what we do, but by what God does in our midst together today. I want to welcome today a wonderful contingent from the uh, Teen Challenge up on the hill, you know, up there in the middle. I, I knew uh, Colfax and I knew uh, that whole program up there back when it was a Catholic retreat center, I believe. Wasn't that what it was? Yeah, been all yeah. Around. yeah it had been. Yeah, I've been around a lot. So anyway, so that's what I enjoyed as part of that. And there was a Teen Challenge program coming in today. Uh, the Teen Challenge program uh, has been something that I've been acquainted with uh, for a period of time. Uh, the Teen Challenge for me began when I was a pastor at Jordan Creek United Methodist Church out in uh, West Des Moines. And uh, I, I invited folks from Teen Challenge to come and to be part of our worship service for a, a brand new church that was kind of uh, in, its, in its infancy. And uh, the folks came and they began to talk about lives that were challenged and lives that were changed. You all with me? And to understand what God can do. What I appreciated was the freshness of the word that came to me from people who'd been there, had been there, and how God had rescued them and brought them to a new place, a new relationship with God. And I give thanks for that. So when I began today, uh, I talked to Chris, who's their activities director, and I said to him, Chris, I said, uh, I want you to come and come to the Ferrari United Methodist Church because they've been having this milk garden, this garden where they've been providing fruit and vegetables, all that stuff. Y'all, some of you here do the same thing in helping out, and it's a wonderful thing, and thank you for doing that. Um, but I said to him, I like to do that. Well, I'm telling you what, when I heard them, the first service, and Chris do the preaching, I thought, Chris, you got to bring that message, you know? Uh, so what we've got for this week, we'll do again next week. How about that, huh? That's how fresh this thing is going to be. So we got your bulletin. We'll, we'll follow through the bulletin. We'll do that part of the service. Um, but then we'll kind of skip a little bit. We'll let the kids go. And then we'll uh, be set and all ready to go. So we'll, we'll, we'll be in good shape at that particular point. This is the day that the Lord has made. And let us rejoice and be glad in that. And for that, we give thanks and enjoy together. For the, for the last few weeks, we've been working on a sermon series which talks about the Lord's Prayer. What is that prayer all about? Next week, we're going to continue that. But as part of that is the opportunity, the challenge I gave you last week, to pray the Lord's Prayer. How many times a day? Three. Three. Oh, sorry. Yes, very good. <laughs> Three times a day. And that's what it's about. I mean, you know, you pick the time, set your phone to go off. You know, that thing you always say, what in the world is that phone going off for? Now you have a purpose and a reason for setting that up. An alarm that goes off, and that's the time for you to pray the Lord's Prayer. You know, I've been doing that for several weeks now. When it first went off, I thought, there's not time for this. And I thought, okay, I acknowledge the Lord's Prayer. And then all of a sudden, I begin to just take a little time, take a break, and actually say the Lord's Prayer. And with each week here, we've been taking an opportunity to, to understand what that means. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy is your name. That's what we're going to look at next week as part of it. And to understand the first time, when, the first time in Scripture when all of a sudden, God's name was never used as Father in the Old Testament. Suddenly, Jesus says, I want you to pray like this. Abba, the Aramaic. Our Father. That's what God is now. Our Father God. We're going to hear a witness and testimony about what the Father God can do for us as part of our sharing together uh, in our service of worship today. So let's begin by doing our prayer together as part of our welcoming, and let's do the Lord's Prayer together. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Would you stand and open up your hymnals, if you would, to hymn number 64. Hymn number 64, as we join together in singing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Hymn number 64, let's join together. Three. 
accompanying in our welcoming to worship as we, as we read together. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our songs, our songs, our voices, our praise, our prayers, and our faith and hope shall rise to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Friends, we want to take an opportunity to greet one another this morning. Remember, God loves you and I love you too. You can either remain seated, you can stand, you can stay in your pew, you can wave your hand, you can bump arms, you can do whatever. But let's take an opportunity to greet one another as our worship service together. As we begin today, I want to see if you have any announcements that you want to make and put together. I see the hand in the back. Yes. Sign-up sheets are still on the table. This is the last Sunday, so we need more bodies to do heaven signs out. Please get your bodies in here. Yes. Um, we have a new Preparation of the food is? Well, we deboned turkeys, we have pot, we have some pies to bake, we have things to get ready because it's going to be all dry food again. And what's coming up? Dar's home turkey supper. And when is that? November 4th. And November what time? To 7. Very good, excellent. Now, one more thing before you finish. On the table, there are some sign up sheets. What specifically do we need? We need well, people to do what things? The things that we need. Um, that it looks like um, are we're going to have two lines this year preparing food to take out because it's all drive through. Uh, it was a little hard to keep up next year, so we do need a few more bodies for that, I think. Okay. But, okay, very good. And sign up are for liturgist position, and the next one is sign up for children's message as part of that. Is there a third one? Just those two. Fellowship, 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 fellowship time. time. Oh, fellowship time. Thank you so much as part of that. Which is moving, did I hear that right? Fellowship time's moving before the service. Yes. 1030. 1030. Very good. Oh, we had two takers this morning, so I'll be there next week too. Very good. It's good to have you here. So before the service is yes. fellowship time. Yes. 
we're looking for people uh, to do either one of those other two things. And trust me, if you do a reader's thing, I send the reading to you about Tuesday, so you get a chance to work on it and everything else. And look, Tom has survived, so you know you can survive this process, all right? Because next week I'm putting Tom in charge of passing the sheet to get other people to be signed up, okay? So that he has to not uh, do that. But he's getting into the mode, and we think that appreciated that as part of it. A quick announcement for you. Last week we held the very first Bible study on the miracles of Jesus, and we did that over at the Mingo United Methodist Church. We had a little challenge with some of the system there as it went out, but we fixed that, so we're ready to go. But we won't be meeting this week. We will not meet tonight. Because tonight will be the charge conference. It takes place over at the Newton United Methodist Church. For any of you that would like to come, that starts at 5 o'clock p.m. at First United Methodist. And we'd love to have you come and to be part of that. Um, but if not, just know that we will not have a, a Bible study this this and We will move everything we're doing. Number two, which is to turn the water to wine, will take place next Sunday at 6 o'clock over there at the Mingo United Methodist Church. We had a number of folks online, and we give you thanks for that. Some of you had some difficulty with that. We we're sorry about that, but we finally got that worked out. So that's going to happen. And then uh, we'll also people that are in person. We'd love to have you there. If you do not have a book, if you don't know anything, just come. That's all you have to do. I've got books for you. We'll help you out with that. We'll give you lessons. We'll give you more until your book arrives and become part of that. Are there any other announcements you need to make? Yes, ma'am. Oh, wait a minute, excuse me, excuse me. Just like for the reading of the Lord's Prayer. Very good, excellent. For three. Wow. How much? Two pounds each. I understand. Absolutely. Very good. We give thanks for that and the success of delivery and Right for the parents. Of diapers for you, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Full time. Absolutely. Good thing we're not into the cloth diaper here, right? <laughs> that would be a challenge. Some of you have been there. You understand. You remember those things as part of it. Any other announcements we need to make together today? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I didn't mean to be interrupting you, but you did. once I got started, I decided I just... You know, I understand that exactly. You can continue right through the sermon, whatever you want to do. It is not a problem. Once the spirit moves, let the spirit move, you know? When, when I was in seminary... When I was in seminary, at the end of the at the end of the time in each of the classes, there would come a time when suddenly the seminary professor would say, "Who would like to pray?" And he'd call out a name, and that person would have to stand up and pray. Y'all with me? See how it goes? One day we were sitting in class, an ex Jesus class, and in the middle of it, we had a guy who fell asleep during ex Jesus. Can you imagine? He fell asleep, and all of a sudden, just to get him back, we decided we'd do this. So we went to the guy, and we said to him, "Tom, Tom, wake up!" He goes, "What? What? What?" We go, you're supposed to pray. Well, the class is only halfway done. He stands up and he goes, gentlemen, let us pray. And we all <laughs> broke out and laughed. And the professor said, wait a minute, friends. If the spirit moves, the spirit moves. Let him pray. Let him pray. He back on us, you know, as part of that whole thing. I did. What a gift it gives us as God's people to make that kind of thing happen. In your bulletin, it says this. What is our purpose for being in worship this morning? Let me repeat that. What is our purpose for being in worship this morning? John 12 says it. What does it say? Say it with me. For this purpose, I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. On your inserts, the song, glorify thy name. Glory to God, glory to Jesus, and glory to the Holy Spirit. Let's join again for a second. Jesus, here we go. 
me in reading the psalm. I will, I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praises to your name. Shout with joy to God, everyone. Sing to the glory of his name. Offer God our praise and glory. How awesome are your works. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. Let's stand as we join together and sing to the glory of God. words to us. You'll see it in the bulletin. Join with me as we read it. Psalm 100. Enter into God's presence with glory and thanksgiving. Into God's sanctuary with praise. Give thankfulness to our God for God alone is worthy of our thanks. So let's offer up our thankfulness to God together today. We've heard about the twin triplets. Huh, it's hard for me to even say that word. Or the triplets, the part of that. Any other words that we have of thankfulness and praise together today? What are you thankful for? Let's hear it. I know there's a lot of them, so here we go. I have a lot of them, but yes. Thank you, thank you to Tom for covering for me last week. I had to back out of religious. Um, also, my husband got done with his uh, crops last night about 10 o'clock, so very thankful to have that done before the rain hit today. Um, I also have a daughter who's celebrating her 21st birthday this week. Yes. And so we're having dinner together with some other family. So I just got a lot to be thankful for right now. Listen to all the thankfulness. I love it. Very good. Other words of thanks that we have together today. God inhabits our praises. What is it? I'm thankful that you started your Bible study. Thank you. I do. I tell you, it is wonderful to have you all participate with that. And that's open to anybody who wants to come, either online or there, but it, it's worth the drop. Yeah. It is. It's worth the drop. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Frederick Clark on the farm. Yeah. Now, there was a time when we would have thought that to be an absolute. You did, didn't you? I tell you. I've heard that from so many farmers. And what a blessing that God has given us. Farmers know how to live by faith. They plant the seed and go, oh, God, please, <laughs> do whatever you need to do. And, uh, man, what a, what a gift. What a gift. Uh, what other, one more uh, word of praise and thanks. Yes? I was just for the council. I think we've been invited for, like, a men's breakfast or something. I can't remember what day it is. I know I'm currently running the service. But I, <laughs> uh, you probably know the breakfast more than I do. But I think it was for our Yeah, let me, let me give you that real quickly so that you know. If any of you would like to join us over at the Ferrar United Methodist Church, that's on like almost the other side of the world. But if you'd like to join us over there, we have the greatest group of men. Most of the guys there don't belong to that church. They just live in that community. You may know some of those people. And it begins at 7 o'clock on Saturday morning. That's the first Saturday of the month. And you're welcome to drive over. And I'm telling you, talk about a breakfast. I mean, it's pancakes, it's bacon, it's eggs, it's fruit, it's juice, it's the stiffest coffee you've ever tasted. And I'm telling you, they have a great time together, a little bit of sharing, all that kind of stuff. But these guys just keep coming back and coming back. It's a, it's a great way. We're going to officially make that kind of invitation. But since Brent brought it up, I'll invite you. I'd love to have you come. Saturday morning, 7 o'clock, go over there and, uh, and join us. No one's a stranger to that place. And uh, we promise we will feed you well. And it's worth the drive. Trust me, it's worth the drive uh, to be part of that. Uh, now that we're kind of connected here in the interim, we just <coughs> like to have an opportunity to share it again. And uh, I think that's a wonderful thing. Thank you Jeff, for bringing that up as part of it. We're going to uh, put together our kids' message right now. So uh, Beth is going to come down and to do that. Kids, come on down here before you go to your Sunday school class. And
cows in from a few miles away. So, well, we got a group here this morning. Forget this. All right, so, um, what's coming up? Um, I heard it, I heard it whispered louder. Halloween. Halloween. What are you going to go for as Halloween? What are you going to be as Halloween? What are you going to wear? Harry You're going to be Harry Potter. What are you going to be? You're going to be Harry Potter too? Both of you. All right. What are you going to be? Hippie. You're going to be hippie? <laughs> you? You're what? Oh, you're going to be Monster High Girl? Okay. Um, I'm going to be a fish from Fortnite. A fish? A fish from Fortnite. Is that like a blocky fish? Like one you can build out Legos? Or? No. Right. We won't get it. <laughs> Did you know? When we say, hallowed be thy father, now, hallowed be thy name, that's what forms Halloween, all hallowed be. So on, when we say, our father, hallowed be thy name, Halloween is Halloween, as in, it's a hallowed holiday, a holy day. Just without the ween. That's right, exactly. And you know what the ween kind of means? So it's the it's the it's the day before All Saints Day, and so that's what we get. Halloween is All Hallows Eve. So now you know exactly what I mean. And some people would say that Halloween is a pagan holiday, something that was invented back in the back in the Celtic days or whatever, or whatever tale they want to tell you. But actually, it's been a Christian holiday pretty much from the start. So, um, why is it on the 31st of October? It's because Pope Gregory transferred the feast of All Saints Day from May 13th to November 1st, and therefore the day before All Saints Day is a hallowed Eve, just like Christmas Eve, you have the day before. So that's where Halloween comes from, three, three weeks before All Saints Day. And like I said, some people says that it's from a pagan holiday, but actually it's been entirely Christian all along the way. Why do you think people try to say it's a not not a Christian holiday? Why do you think? Because they want to make the Christian holiday not a Christian holiday. They wanted to make fun of the Christian. So they met, they try to invent different reasons why. Did you know that? We get uh, we get various traditions we do for Halloween from various countries. <clears throat> so where do you think we got the idea of ca carving pumpkins? Where? Um, it's, um, it's, um, what is it? <laughs> carving turnips. It was the uh, it was the Irish that carved turnips, and then eventually that turned into carving pumpkins. And then, where do you think we got, well, actually, yeah, where do you think we got the dressing up from? All right, seriously. Um, Are you coming back? Say what? Ah, well, what? Some people used to think that um, wearing costumes would scare people. Kind of, yeah. 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 kind of, but actually, it was the French that came up with dressing up for Halloween. So we got, the, we got that from the French. And then, who, where do you think we got the idea for begging for candy door to door? 
I know kids always love the Vegas Trip. All kinds of things, all the time. But what was the day before? It was the English. They would go from door to door for soul cakes, promising to pray for the departed. Loved ones of those who gave these trees of being the origin of trick or treating. So all these things kind of worked their way in from various cultures, and they combined into what we know today in the United States, and then kind of we re exported the, the uh, holiday outside, so everybody else does it now. So we kind of found the best way to put everything together. Candy, dress up, parties. What could be better? So what I really want you to remember is that Halloween is not a holiday of scary spirits and things like that. It's about fun, but it's also about celebrating God in the best way. So we can play dress up, we can do lots of things, but we always want to keep the idea that this is a holiday to celebrate in, and we need to always keep God in our hearts the whole time. So when everybody says that no, this is this trip, this is a scary holiday you shouldn't come up with, you shouldn't participate, just tell them all Hallows Eve is holy day. So, enjoy your Halloween, and let's pray. Hallowed be thy name, for it's part of our holiday coming up. Lord, be in our hearts, keep us pure, keep us on the straight path to be good and honest Christians, and protect our children as they go out for Halloween. Amen. Amen. Okay, you guys can head on down. Thank you. this week? Oh yes. Have we felt there's times when we were all alone and we just wish that someone would come and rescue us? I have good news for you. That is the God that we know and care for. And that's why we come together as the church. That's what it means to be part of the family of God. To come to our Father God and to say, God, I've got some things that are just burdening me, that are holding me down, things I want to lift before you. We'll have time together today in order to offer those prayers up uh, silently. But I just wanted to see if there are any particular prayer requests that any of you have. While you're thinking about that, let me remind you of some things that we want to lift before God. One of the things we want to remind ourselves about God is to pray for those that are experiencing COVID or those that are coming through that, for the hospitals, the staff, the doctors and nurses and other staff that are there on the front lines and working for that. We want to pray for our schools, for our teachers, for our students, and for the staff that are working. So bus drivers, for all those folks, we want to lift them up before God in, in a time of prayer together. Uh, I also want to lift up some uh, specific prayer requests. Pray for our world in which we live. Pray for the transitions. Pray for our country. Pray for the challenges that we face. Pray for those that are in leadership, that they may truly lead and God may influence that leading as part of our life. Pray for our community. Pray for those in our community that are invisible, the people that we never see. Pray for those people up on top of the hill at Teen Challenge ministry that goes on there and for those that provide that ministry. For a rescue that God has, a plan for them in their life, not to harm them, but a plan to give them a future and a plan for God to bless them. As well. To pray for us, for our, for our children, for our grandchildren, to pray for those that, are, that we love and care for in our life, whether they're nearby or far away, that God will bless them. We want to remember them in our prayers together today. We want to pray for our farmers for those that are out there in the fields and those who travel the highways and the trucks and all those things. That's, a, that's one of those challenging jobs. We want to give them an opportunity to know that that's part of their life and what we want them to do. Are there any other prayer requests that you all have that we want to lift up together today as part of that? Yes. The kidnapped folks in Haiti. Oh, yes. That, uh, that they'll be set free. Also, that lady that uh, we should be praying for kidnappers that the testimony of those that they have kidnapped might move them to a different place with the thought. Absolutely. I want to pray for those that have been captured. I want to pray for the pastors and for the congregations there in Haiti. They're the ones that I've worked with. And, and right now they're having people being, uh, being uh, 
taken uh, captive. Uh, there are pastors coming right into the services and doing those kinds of things. That, that, that country is always in need. Most loving people, <laughs> most loving people, <clears throat> the challenges that they face. I want to pray for that. Thank you, Doc, for lifting that up for us. I appreciate it. <laughs> Other prayer requests that you have you want to lift before God? Pray for Linda Walter. Yes, for Linda. She's, she's one of the big forces for the heart to suffer. Really yeah, she, we offered a prayer for her last week, and we want to continue to pray for her. Other prayer requests that we want to lift up? But we just want to lift up all the silent prayer that you all have too. So let's go to God in prayer. God, I give you thanks today that we have the opportunity to come to the God of all creation. We look around, we see the beauty that you provide for us this time of year. Huh. It's just semblance of the beauty that you create in each one of us. The bounty that we enjoy, the words of thankfulness, is the bounty that we experience in our life. When you give us far above and beyond all that we ask for, God, we come with the desires of our hearts today. Whatever it may be, financial, spiritual, emotional, whatever it may be, we just come before you asking for the bounty of God, the Father, to be poured out upon us and upon circumstances and situations that seem totally beyond our control. That's why we come and pray this, thy will be done. That's what we pray for. Thy will be done. As we offer to a God who nothing is impossible. God, we lay those requests before you. We lay the request for this church and its ministry, for the pastor that will be coming to serve here, for each member of this congregation, for those that are our neighbors who live next door to us, that we might be able to love our neighbors as we love ourselves and love you. We might be able to be witnesses into the world and into our community. We may find ways to demonstrate sermons of preaching care and love by what we share with others, even those who we do not know. We're going to pray for one another and lift one another before your throne. God, you heard the prayer requests that we've offered up today. There are other prayer requests that we have that we just we want to make just silently to you. There are other things that have held us. There are other wishes and hopes that we have, not only for today, but to deal with our past and also to deal with our future. It's in the middle of that that you say to us, give it to me, says God. Give me, give me all the hopes and dreams. Give me all the things that you've ever hoped for. Because God, we owe it all to you. We know that God is with us. Amen. So God, for the next moment, Give us the opportunity to quietly, silently pray and offer up to you the desires of our hearts, the praises, whatever it may be, but to give this moment totally to God. Now, oh God, hear this prayer as we gather together to pray from our hearts' sake. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It's my privilege to introduce Chris, and uh, he'll be introducing some others who will come and share with us uh, fresh from the words. Chris, come and share with us, my friend. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to come here and speak about a ministry that's so important to me and also uh, be able to share a little bit of a message that's on my heart today. Um, before I begin, is there anybody in here that's not familiar with our ministry? That's, that's kind of what I, what I figured. Uh, has anyone actually been to our website within the last two weeks by any chance? No? So maybe this will shock some of you guys. Um, 
we have actually gone through a process of a, a rebranding of our ministry name um, that we are now called Sheepgate, a division of Adult and Teen Challenge. We are still Teen Challenge, but we, uh, we're announcing ourselves as, as Sheepgate. And here's, and here's uh, one of the reasons why. Uh, if you go to our website, you'll get a really long explanation, detailed, on the reason why we chose this name. But here is the most practical reason I can share with you today. There's been many times when one of our potential students would be standing in front of a judge and that judge is having to decide between giving them one opportunity to come to this program or be sentenced to prison. And we make our case in front of the judge and we're like, judge, uh, you know, give this, give this man an opportunity to, to come to Team Challenge. You know, it's going to do this for him, this for him, this for him. And the judge sits back and thinks, you know, well, well that sounds good, but... This man's a 40-year-old man. Don't you think he's a little bit too old to go be with a bunch of teenagers? You know, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a difficult name that we've had. So the last seven years ago, we added on the word adult in Teen Challenge to try to convey who we are a little bit more because, as you guys know, here in Iowa and Nebraska, we don't, uh, we don't work with people that are below the age of 18 in Iowa and 19 in Nebraska. So we were saying adult in Teen Challenge in the Midlands here in Colfax, Iowa. Every time we'd answer the phone, so now... We are choosing to use the name Sheepgate. Uh, we're a division of the Team Teen Challenge. We're still affiliated with Team Challenge. It is still the same exact ministry. It's just our way of being able to be able to convey our message a little bit more of what we're doing. Um, with all that said, uh, I just want to tell you very quickly kind of some of the things that we do there. Um, these men uh, that come into our program they spend the first seven months here in Colfax, and the last five months they spend over in Omaha, Nebraska at our re-entry center. The first seven months in Colfax are extremely difficult for some of these men. Uh, they wake up at six o'clock in the morning, and they go to bed at 10 o'clock at night, and every minute of the day is structured. Usually they'll spend anywhere between 20 or 30 hours doing biblical studies, either self-studies or being taught in a lecture by myself or a few others. Then they will also spend some time uh, doing work therapy, uh, which would be, you know, working on, uh, in the grounds. You know, we have a, like 100 acres out there, you know, needing to, to mow, to rake leaves, working in the kitchen, helping maintain the building, teaching them different skills. One of the guys we have here today has been in the shop learning different mechanical traits, um, many different things. What I want to show you this morning, uh, very quickly, I'm going to bring up one of our students. His name is Austin. Austin has been in our program for about three months now. I'm going to have him to share a little bit, a little testimony of where he was and where God has been taking him today. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Austin. Um, like Chris said, I've been a student of Adult Team Challenge for Sheepgate now for three months. And growing up, um, my whole life, I was kind of troubled by a bunch of just shapeless fears and lies that were poured into over my life. And... Um, and believing those things and falling away that ultimately led me into a situation where I became dependent on opiates and that that was very destructive in my life and I lost everything in a year in relationships with my family and um, jobs and things like that and God kind of brought me to the end of myself and he, he placed me in Teen Challenge with now Sheep Gate and even those first three months there I my life has completely changed. Um, God has revealed, um, he's taken those lies that were engraved like into my heart and let me see through the truth. And um, it's exciting to say I haven't even thought about opiates or nicotine and since like my second week of being there. And yeah, the power of God is awesome and glory be to him. been uh, working for this ministry for about three and a half years now um, and I can tell you it's exciting to watch the lives be changed individually seeing seeing Austin or, or Dylan his life being changed or any of the other students that we have all of their lives being changed Maceo even as well uh, you know all of their lives when you get to see their life get changed it excites me it, it really does. I get to see them going one way and God get a hold of them and change them and go the next way. But I'll tell you what excites me even more. 
is not only their life being changed, but that ripple effect, that generational change that happens. And I can tell you firsthand experience. I was a student 15 years ago uh, up on that hill, and I can tell you I've experienced this ripple effect. I went into the program as this young, broken, drug addict, criminal, had no future, no life, didn't really know anything about God. And I'll tell you what, because of going through that program, because of graduating that program, God led me to become a missionary to Pakistan, to, to Kenya, and spend over a decade, uh, a little bit less than a decade down in Brazil where I met my wife, and together we have three beautiful kids. And when we had everything going for us down there, when I got the opportunity to come serve this place, we left everything immediately and got on that plane within three months just for the opportunity to serve this place because that's how special that place is to me. Because I know I would have accomplished nothing had it not been for first going through that place first. I'm going to talk this morning about faith. Faith is something that we teach every one of our students. Faith is something that has been extremely important in my life. It's the, it is the glue that holds the gospel together. Faith is a message that uh, has been all the way from Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation, page after page after page. You see this idea of faith. And I can already see from a lot of your faces that when I say the word faith, you know, some of you are holding on to your wallets really tight and some of you are already offended. I get it, guys. I really do. Faith preachers have gotten such a bad name because of things that they chose to say and do about it. I'm a faith preacher, but I'm not that type of faith preacher. I believe in preaching real, genuine faith in Jesus Christ and giving your entire life to Him. Faith is found in the book of Hebrews. It's Hebrews 11, or chapter 11, verse 1. And the writer says, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of the things not seen. What that means is sometimes when you're reading God's Word or when you're praying or in a situation, sometimes God will speak right to you right in the very inner side of you. And he's given you something, a message, just right for you. And you choose to believe what God is saying. It doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter what your senses try to tell you. If it's God, you know that you know that you know that it is God. I've preached in literally thousands of churches around the world. And I can tell you this. I always see two different types of faith. Over here, I'll see that Abraham-type faith. And over here, kind of that Thomas-type faith. Now, Abraham, he, he was famous uh, in, our, in our scriptures for many different reasons. But the biggest reason I want to tell you this morning is about the idea that he was very old. He couldn't have a child with his wife. But God spoke, and Abraham believed it. And because he believed it, it was accredited to him as righteousness. That's the Abraham type faith. No matter what type of science or anything around was saying, hey, you cannot impregnate your wife. I, the Lord your God, am saying it. Make it happen, it's going to happen. The Thomas type faith is a little bit different. Remember, Thomas, after Jesus died and rose again, uh, Jesus appeared to the other disciples and they came to Thomas and said, Hey, Thomas, I've seen Jesus. Jesus is alive again. Well, what did Thomas say? No, if I can't see it, if I can't touch it, I'm not going to believe it. That's the Thomas type faith, and it's not the type of faith that's going to change anyone's life at all. Think about this, before we give Thomas a bad name, because my, uh, my son's middle name is Thomas, my firstborn son, and I chose that name for a reason, because Thomas, even though we give him such a bad reputation for that, remember, when Jesus was going to Jerusalem, knowing he was going to go get killed, all the other disciples tried stopping Jesus, but what did Thomas say? He got up and said, hey, let's follow him so we can go die with him. Thomas had real faith, he just, he couldn't understand the resurrection at the time. Now, I want to look in the scriptures real quick this morning. I want to unpack the part where Jesus is talking about faith and using his faith. If you have your Bibles, I'm in the Gospel of Matthew this morning. And I'm going to go as quickly as I can. Uh, but I want you to really understand what Jesus is saying here. Because I believe that this message of faith is so important for us. Now, in this situation here in Matthew 17, Jesus had sent out all of his disciples to go cast out demons, to do miracles, to preach the good news. And they were seeing wonderful things happen. But then we see this parent bring up, bring their, their son, their, their child that was demon-possessed to Jesus and say, Hey, Jesus, we went to your disciples and they couldn't, they couldn't heal my child. They couldn't do it. 
And this is Jesus' response. He says here in Matthew 17, uh, starting in verse 20, he said to them, Because of your little faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you'll say from this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here and imagine that every single person has heard this scripture before, right? Every, we all have, you know, the artwork in our kitchen that says, you know, faith the size of a mustard seed or moving mountains. We, we've all seen this before and we've all heard this before. But I want to I show you really what Jesus is trying to convey for them right there. Before this uh, service began, I uh, drew a mustard seed on my hand. Anyone ever, you guys can see that there? No? I can't either. It's really, really small. It's, a, it's a, like a little speck. Anyone ever seen a mustard seed in real life? A couple people. It's really, really small. It looks insignificant. If you sneezed and it was right here, it would probably blow away. It looks like nothing. But Jesus is using this as an example to teach us what real faith is, the faith that can move mountains. He starts it out in the beginning. He says, it's because of your little faith. Now, a lot of us, we get confused right there, and we think, oh, it's, it's the size of our faith that matters. Because immediately after he talks about because of your little faith, he talks about this really small seed. But that's not what the Scripture is saying. The Scripture is saying because, or it says, faith like a mustard seed. If you look in the Greek, it's saying faith like a mustard seed, or faith similar to a mustard seed, or faith the same as a mustard seed. He's not making the comparison about the size of that seed. He's talking about the characteristic of that seed itself. And I know here in Iowa, we have these little mustard seed plants, and they don't really amount to hardly a whole lot, but that's not the mustard seed faith that Jesus was talking about. When he was looking at that mustard seed and using it as an example, he was talking about the characteristics and qualities of this mustard seed. He says it's so small, so insignificant, but it's been biologically designed to do one thing and one thing only, to reach the surface. You can bury that mustard seed in almost any type of conditions. It could be rocky, it could be sandy, it could be you know, muddy, it could be uh, horrible, horrible conditions packed way down deep. And no matter what, it's going to fight until its very end to reach the surface. If it has to move to the left, it moves to the left. If it has to move to the right, it moves to the right. If it has to go around a rock to reach that surface, that's what this plant does. And once it reaches the surface, once it breaks through the ground, it does not stop there. It is designed to continue to go and go and go. These mustard seeds, they almost look kind of like small trees, 10, 12, even 16 foot high. And they're so big and so strong that even birds make nests in these trees. That's the type of faith that Jesus is talking about. Not the size of your faith. It takes a little bit of faith to get moving in a direction. But he's talking about the quality, about never stopping and never quitting. All of us here, we start in different types of situations. Some of us, you might end up being in a situation where you feel broken, where you feel hopeless, where everything in you just wants to, just wants to sit down and say, you know what, I'm done. I've been doing this for 12, 15, 20, 25 years. But this situation here is just too difficult for me. I'm giving up. I'm done. That's not mustard seed type faith. That's not the faith that Jesus was talking about in order to move a mountain. We believe in him and his character and his quality. Our creator God, how good he is. And we continue to push on to the very end. Guys, I want to encourage you this morning with this. No matter what situation you find yourself in, no matter what you're going through, don't look at the obstacles in front of you. Push through those obstacles. Move around those obstacles. Don't stop. Don't quit until we reach that very end when we're face to face with our Creator God. It's going to be a beautiful day. And I'll see you there, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Faith is the victory. That's what it's all about. We've heard that testimony shared with us together today. And here's the good news. You're going to take that message out into the community. <laughs> this week, you're all going to preach a sermon. Whoever you talk to, everyone you talk to, whatever you do, you'll be preaching a message. 
People will look at you and talk about if you're loving, if you're caring, if you give them time, energy, and effort. And if you do that, that will give glory to God, the God that we serve. Thank you guys for coming together today and sharing that fresh word with us. We need to know that the Holy Spirit's at work. And here in our community, we know there are other people, people that looks like everything's together. We have needs in our heart and our heart. And so we want to we want to come together as the church of Jesus Christ. And we want to head out into the world to make a difference. I end up every service by saying the same thing. Go be the church. And you all yell back at me. Go be the church. And I send you back out there. I say, our ministry has been to fill ourselves up with the energy that we need, with the faith and reminders of that. Now to go out and to share that with other people. Even if we make a mistake, God will make it right. Even if we don't know what to say, it's just by being present in that moment and by sharing that love that a life may be changed. That a life may be changed. So friends, as we go from this place together today, I'm going to ask you to stand. We're going to join together in singing our song as we depart from this place. And one that you all know, blessed be the tithe that binds. So would you stand as we join together and sing? Blessed be May the Spirit of Christ lead you and guide you. May your life reflect the light of Christ. And may you be the light to the world that finds itself in darkness for this week. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all the people said, Amen. 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 Friends, go be the church. Go be the church. Go be the church. Right. Get out of here. Go be the church. Make it happen. Thank you.